care for you, one. Good morning. We, we welcome you to the 43rd Annual Trail of Courage. My name is Shirley Willard. Uh, Melinda and Claire and Freddie Oden are taking over. Thank God, because I'm eight, gonna be 82 next week and Bill's 86 and we're trying to pass the torch, as they say. So you kids do it. They're kids, ha, huh? they're almost 50. They got gray hair, so I don't know how long it's been. They've been, they've been working with us since they were 15 years old. <laughs> so thank you, Melinda and Freddie, for all your work. Okay, we started the Trail of Courage in 1976 for the National Bicentennial. And boy, has it grown and changed and improved. We've learned a lot, including history of this county, the Potawatomi, historic clothing styles, traditional music, and dance. We were really ignorant when we began this festival in 1976. We didn't know any of that stuff. The first Trail of Courage Festival was held in a hay field on Clyde and Opal Neff's farm on Indiana 25, south of Rochester. Then it was held at Bob Kern's uh, pine tree land across the road and across the river from where we are now. And in 1985, we purchased this land, by we, I mean the Fulton County Historical Society, um, 35 acres for $30,000 from DeKalb Seed Company. So this land is a mile long, but only 300 feet wide, so it's perfect for a festival. It floods down here, and um, it really flooded this last spring, so there was a lot of mud to shovel, well dried dirt to shovel out of the booth when we were getting ready here for the trail this year. Uh, the Trail of Courage has grown in attendance from 1,200 in 1976 to today about 14 to 18,000, depending on the weather. Um, the Fulton County Historical Society built the museum in 1986, moved the Round Barn in 1990, and added other buildings to create the living history village called Loyal, Indiana. There was a little village west of here, and its name was Germany, because there were a lot of German settlers. But when America went to war with Germany, in World War I, they changed the name of that little village to Loyal. So it's not on the map anymore because there's no village there. But we call our uh, village up there Loyal, Indiana. You can visit several of these old buildings now as they're open this weekend and free of charge up there. Um, a tornado in 2015 took down the Round Barn and the old Kiwana Jail and the Athens Cider Mill, which is up there in the village. The Round Barn was rebuilt with insurance money the cider mill was rebuilt by a donation from the Swartz and Nelson family, who had, their family had had the cider mill years ago. And finally this summer, the Kiwana Jail was rebuilt by volunteers Bill Willard, Bruce Baker, and some others. Bruce was a famous, favor, former sheriff here, so he's taken a special interest in the jail, thank goodness. We pray that we will never have a tornado again. The round barn was taken down by tornado in 1989, and then in 2015, and that's enough. <laughs> we will now raise the flag. So, um, uh, let's see, River Valley Colonial Fife and Drum Corps and the Anderson Marching Highlanders will play and uh, Bill Willard and George Godfrey will raise the flag. We need to give us, uh, it's a 1825 flag, I think, but they don't decommission the flag, so we need to give it our respect as if it was our flag today because it is a historic flag that represents America.
We want to especially thank all our veterans who are here today. I know my husband, Bill Willard, was in Korea, and there's a lot of other veterans here. Uh, Bob Pearl was in uh, World War II. I'm having short-term memory loss here. <laughs> Actually, I failed to hit my head not too long ago, so. Anyway, uh, we're going to start now uh, the Anderson Marching Highlanders from Anderson, Indiana will uh, also play now. Thank you. My husband wanted to mention that this flagpole was a tree that was here. And when we bought this land in 1985, we saw there was already a circle. And this one tree was nice and straight and tall, and he said, well, that'll be our flagpole. So it was like God intended this to be here for us. So I want to give you a little bit of history of the Trail of Death. This was a very black mark on Indiana's history. Here in Indiana is named for the Indians, but they drove all the Indians out. The Potawatomi were forcibly removed in two or three removals. The worst one was 1838, which is called the Trail of Death, when so many died. They were marched at gunpoint down Rochester's Main Street, September 5th, 1838. We never want to forget that. We want to remember and do better. We can't go back and change history, but we can recall it and honor the people that tried to do good. Just like today, we don't all agree with what our government's doing, and not all the people in this area agreed with removing the Indians. There were Rochester housewives who came out and gave them hoe cakes to take on the journey. There was a little boy about 10 years old named William Ward who wanted to follow them because they were his playmates. And he followed him and his mother caught up with him a mile south of town, which is about where McDonald's is now, and took him back home. But he kept in contact with the Potawatomi after they got to Kansas. And when he was an old man, he told his story, which is published in a book called Home Folks. We have it for sale at the museum and a lot of other people uh, told their memories in that book too. But uh, it's interesting that he said he kept in contact with them and uh, continued for the rest of his life to uh, consider them his friends. But after that, it seems like nobody reached out to the Potawatomi until we began doing it in 1988. So um, we were getting the Howdy Con newspaper because of Jerry Lewis, uh, who is a citizen of Potawatomi. And uh, I saw in the newspaper a letter from George Godfrey, and uh, he's in the red shirt. And he said that he was at the beginning of the Trail of Death, and he, no, he was at the middle there in Champaign, Illinois, wasn't he? So he thought something should be done to commemorate the 150th anniversary. And I wrote to him and said, well, we're at the beginning of the Trail of Death, and I think something should be done too. So we started working on uh, commemorating the Trail of Death in 1988 and organized a commemorative caravan. And uh, we've traveled, this will be every five years, we've traveled on a commemorative caravan from here to Kansas. And we'll be doing that uh, again starting Monday. Uh, September 17th to the 22nd when we get to uh, Sugar Creek, Kansas. So if any of you want to go along with us or travel with us the first day or any part of the day, why well, just come follow along and we'll be stopping and giving programs at various places. Let's see, I want to introduce our honored Potawatomi family, um, Gary Wischke Giamayuk and his wife Rosie and um, Kayla and Sin.
daughter and he loves these sins five years old now, and Sin likes to dance, so you'll see him, uh, I think all, all of them, but I know Sin likes to dance. <laughs> and our mayor, uh, Ted Penn, has a key to the city to give to them. Thank you, Shirley, and thank you for having me here again. I think this is the third time I've been out here, and it seems to just get bigger and better every time we're here. Gary, I want to welcome you and your beautiful family here to Rochester. Uh, I know you come from the Orange County area where I went to school, and I'm very familiar with that territory out there, and we're very pleased that you've made the long trip back for our festival. It's my great pleasure as mayor of Rochester to present you with the key to our city for as long as you're here. I think it opens up everything but the Lake City Bank. It won't do. <laughs> no, this is a, a token of our expression of your thanks for making this trip. And I've also got my card that if you are ever back in the area, just give us a call and we will open up our welcome gates to welcome you and your family again. Thank you very much. You betcha. And before, I, you might want to say a few, couple of words. Oh, you don't have to. I got something to say about this lady. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They always say that. Let the politician talk. I would be remiss if I walked away from here today and didn't say something about this lady and her 43 years of tribute to this program. That's a long time. 43 years my gosh and it's you know it's ironic a couple nights ago i watched a movie and many of you may have seen it it's called woman walks ahead the carolyn walden story who was the portrait painter in the late 1800s who traveled to the dakotas to make the only sitting portrait of sitting bull and boy, the trials and tribulations she went through. Here's a white woman. She was recently uh, widowed, and she was not going to be stopped. Nobody wanted her to go to the reservations and see Sitting Bull. Still a lot of hatred at that time for Sitting Bull and uh, the other six uh, leaders of the Indian nations who pooled their resources, went together and culminated with uh, fighting General Custer in the 7th Cavalry. Uh, and at that time, Sitting Bull was the only uh, chief left. While she made the journey, Sitting Bull affectionately referred to her, her Indian name, as Woman Walks Ahead, because he could never get up and walk with her. She moves so darn fast. And I thought, this is Shirley Willard all over. And she, she was able to create the painting it now hangs in the museum in Bismarck, North Dakota, but unfortunately, she became a, an advocate for the Indians, but unfortunately, she was not able to save the life of Sitting Bull. He was killed during, during that venture. But I, uh, Shirley, I, I thought of you as I watched this movie all the way through, a woman who would not be uh, kept back in her quest for, for advocating for the Indians, advocating for our historical values. And I just wanted to leave you, because I know we probably won't be here together again in the future. I wanted to leave you with a little token. It's called the Mayor's Pin. I wear it every day. It's the American flag and the Indiana flag. And anyone who has seen wearing that is known as someone who gets things done. The very first person I gave one of those to was Vice President Pence. So you are in good company. Now, can I have a round of applause for a woman who walks ahead? Thank you. I'm sharing the stage today with a cutout of St. Philippine Duchesne. She was a nun who was a missionary to the Potawatomi after the removal uh, there at Sugar Creek, Kansas. 
She was a missionary for uh, about a year and a half or maybe two years, 1841 to 1842. And she became known as she, she Who Prays Always. She was an elderly nun. I know just how she feels, I'm getting elderly. But anyway, she couldn't do any hard work. That's me too, I can't do any hard work. But she taught the Indian children their prayers and how to sew. And they would notice her praying at night. The next morning, she was still in that position. They thought, do you suppose she's really praying all night? So the children put little pebbles or acorns or something around her long black robe and discovered the next morning they were undisturbed. So she really did pray all night. And she became known then as she who prays always. I forget the Potawatomi words for it. Do you know the words for it? Bob? Or, yeah, the name. There's a Potawatomi name and I've heard it. But anyway, she who prays always is the translation. So if anybody wants to get their picture taken with St. Philippine, uh, thanks to uh, Bob and Janet Pearl, uh, she'll be on the stage here for you can, we can move her to one side or wherever you want to take a picture here. So uh, we thank all of you for coming here. And uh, the next half hour, Gary will be talking about the Prairie Band and his family. So um, how far behind am I? Oops, just about on time here. So the next half hour is already passed. So we'll get ready here now for Gary to give his talk. And uh, let's see. I didn't get all the thought I want to be introduced. If you'd please hold up your hand or something. George Godfrey. Uh, did James Olivia Hillman get to come? I don't think he did. He was your cousin. Uh, Peggy King Anderson, they're going to be here this afternoon. Teresa and Wayne McNary and son John. They were here last night for our meeting, but they'll be here later today. Uh, Sharon Hoogstraten family. You can see her this morning. They're kind of late risers, maybe. <laughs> and Bob and Janet Pearl here. <laughs> They're citizen band Potawatomi. Tracy Locke and her daughter Erin. They'll be here later, too. Uh, Martha Schmidt, the Wamigo sisters I know are coming tomorrow. Jeannie, Carmelita, and Kathy and Lisa. And Judy Malott and her daughter Nicole Emmons. Barbara Bowers, Joe Hamilton. These are some of the Potawatomi who said they were coming this weekend, but I don't know exactly what time. So this year, the Potawatomi Trail of Death Commemorative Caravan will travel from Indiana to Kansas starting Monday, September 17th, and arriving at Sugar Creek, Kansas, September 22nd. If you're interested in going along for a day or more all the way to Kansas, fill in the registration form at the museum. Uh, we start out with a uh, program at 9 o'clock Monday morning at Menominee Statue. Everybody know where Menominee Statue is? Up uh, north of here on US 31, there's a sign that points toward the west and says uh, Chief Menominee Monument. So you turn on that road and you go about six miles and finally there's a sign there that says turn right. So then it's real close there. It's a huge statue out in the country. We want to acknowledge the people who passed away this last year. <sighs> Sad to say, we miss them all. John Kleinhem, Gentleman John, a rope maker. Freeman Miller, a coppersmith. Singing Wind Rose. Harry and Carolyn Knopf, who were with the uh, Miami Village here. Tab Van Meter, Judy Seckerly, Scott H Henthorne. May they rest in peace and our thoughts and prayers with all these families. Are there other Trail of Courage participants who have walked on? So we'll be open till 6 p.m. today and we'll lower the flag at 5. Tomorrow we'll close at 4. If there's any changes in schedule, let me know and I'll announce them. We have a different program on this stage every half hour. We hope you all have a great day enjoying the programs and the food. There's apple dumplings and ice cream. Which direction are they? Down that way. <laughs> and chicken and noodles, and buffalo burgers, and potato chips fried in big iron kettles, apple sausage, fudge, where's the fudge booth? You gotta find the fudge booth. I love that fudge. Corn on the cob, turkey legs, Indian fry bread, tacos, and more. So Anderson Marching Highlanders, they have a booth here too. And I think you're having what, pulled pork sandwiches, macaroni and cheese pie, and wazzle, spiced apple cider. So. That's a new this year, the Rochester Masonic Lodge, number 79, will serve pancakes and sausage for breakfast. 
Well, we're going to have a great lot of fun today, so. And learn some history, too. Stick around for Gary to tell the history of the Prairie Band Potawatomi and his family. So, River Valley Colonials, will you lead, lead us out? Thank you. from Wisconsin. And now the Anderson High School Marching Highlanders from Anderson, Indiana. Baker? No, I did not. I just I came in and then I was with Jim with us with the group and then we came here. I didn't see anybody much Oh wow, Bill is here. Now. He, said, he said it's gonna be. Uh, 
last one. So, oh, you mean Jim? Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised, you know, as, you know, you guys were talking about how sickly he was. And we saw a guy, we saw a guy in Obisville. And uh, whether or not he was playing. Hell of a zoo. I I mean, I agree. You know, when he came out to Obisville, I didn't know. Jeff White is the one down the alley. All right. He's not coming. Thank mm -hmm. you. 